Good morning, folks. Veteran observers recognize L waves ripped across the planet. Bigger quakes tend to ring Earth's bell, and that's just what we got last night. Just before the New Day UTC, a powerful earthquake struck 8 miles off the coast of PNG, just west of the Solomon Islands, 8-pointer location from February. It's the sixth significant quake of the five days of this watch so far. Readings ranged from 6.2 to 6.6, and there are no injuries reported. Gorgeous shot here of C-2012-S1 ISON. It's by Hubble. I'd like to quickly reiterate to NASA a humble request from a month ago. This summer, ISON will disappear behind the sun from Earth's view, just like Mars has been out of sight for a few days. It just so happens that ISON will be smashing through the northernmost fringe of the asteroid belt at that time. Who knows what it could hit or what could hitch a ride? We cannot wait until August to re-establish a visual. If you flipped Stereo B for the nothing special Comet Elenin, you have set a precedent here, especially given the unquestioned potential of the intruder and its projected path. Let's flip another one and watch ISON. If it sends debris into the inner system or changes trajectory south, even the slightest, we need to know that the second it happens, with respect. Borrowing more NASA material here, their Earth Observatory giving a window into flood season. We're charging full steam ahead with spring showers up to 8 inches in a few hours here, and the snow melt north of this is already predicted to break some records. Southwest Pacific, zero severe warnings for the next 12 hours. Just grab your long sleeves if you're in the south. Europe taking it two ways, first as the thunder in the Mediterranean, and second as a line of clouds enters over the UK. In North America, the low pressure convergence line extends from the Gulf way up to Canada. This convergence is strengthened by clockwise forcing highs on either side of the convergence. East pushes north, and west of the line it brings it down. Recorded this last night to give scope to the changes of the solar wind. And keeping that left side baseline in mind, we have gone from 2 or 3 to over 100 protons per cubic centimeter, 250 to 350 kilometers per second, which I expect to ramp up way more going forward, and from about 1,000 to 10,000 Kelvin in the temperature. Now, SOHO solar wind data shows a less dense burst, but confirms the timing and a coronal hole signature of density spiking at the outset. We expect speed to go up today and density to go down. The solar wind shift set off the Canadian magnetometers first. Fluxgate shows a large disturbance in Earth's shield, plasma penetrating already, and a baseline resonance induced. KP index already hit 4 and we'll watch that throughout today. Let's take a quick look at how this impact looked from the side view impact on the magnetosphere. Sun off to the right, keeping in mind that this also comes from ACE telemetry. Earth footprint has chilled out, no movement from yesterday. Still got wide open umbral fields, but you can see the end in sight. Flaring got up into mid and high C range, but unable to reproduce that M flare from a few days ago. Still got the magnetic complexity of a delta spot. It's when the blue and red, positive and negative, are strongly held within umbras, the dark spots that are near to one another or directly interacting within the same penumbra. That's the orange around the dark sunspot. The new guy still lacks any impressive features. I'll leave you with some shots of our stars. The quake watches in its last two, two and a half days. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.